the next paper is of uh, uh, Dr. Nastaviks, is it it? Textile associated with cultural and religious activities. Yes, hello. I think I think uh, Professor Nastaviks is present in the session. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, forgive me for um, mispronouncing your name. You can equally take a revenge of by pronouncing my name wrong. So I, I welcome you. And we go on to the next paper. That is, it sounds very interesting. Textiles associated with cultural and religious activities. I invite Professor Nastavik to deliver his scholarly lecture. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, uh, sir. yes, thank sir. you very much uh, for the, all the organizers of this conference. Uh, I'm Odis Nastovic, uh, PhD candidate in theory of culture uh, from the Latvian Academy of Culture. And uh, this is my topic. Here uh, is an introduction. Uh, there are uh, recent um, studies about uh, how the cultures are spread and how they are uh, influencing each other. For example, according to John Koch and Vakish uh, Narasimhan uh, in 2019, uh, there is this um, uh, theory uh, that uh, uh, Latvians who constitute a part of the Baltic cultural sphere in Northeastern Europe uh, that is the place from where Indo-Iranians came as a reflux due to the admixture of around 24% of European Middle Neolithic ancestry in the genetic signature for most Sintashta, so the Proto-Indo-Iranian homeland individuals, which is distinct from other cultures who lack uh, this uh, European Middle Neolithic, being a result of a primary direct migration from Yamna, yeah? So uh, it also is shown here in the map where you can see the Yamnaya, the so considered the beginning point of uh, proto, uh, proto Indo Europeans. And then you can see these uh, arrows, how. The, the people have spread. However, in case of uh, going here to India uh, and, and uh, this Iran area, uh, the flow first came to this Baltic cultural sphere and then as a reflux uh, got to um, uh, that side. Here uh, you can see there is this um, Baltic cultural sphere marked in red color. It encompasses the nowadays Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus. Uh, here is a Moscow. Here is um, the Kiev. Here is uh, Warsaw of Poland. Here is uh, the borderline between the Poland and Germany. So this uh, Baltic cultural sphere has a lot of uh, common features. And uh, Latvians uh, are known for peculiar use of signs, patterns, ornaments, and designs, commonly known as Latvio Raksti, which are often seen in textiles of folk art, such as national costumes, as well as charms and amulets, Latvian religion, Dioturiba. In this study, uh, there are three parts. The first is that uh, Latvians have preserved a pre-colonial native writing system of not records, uh, the Mazglu Raksti, with previously studied phonographic units and newly discovered ideographic units. These are analyzed first. Then the geometric shapes of the Latvian signs, Latvi Raksti, each possess a symbolic meaning in the Autorib, the Latvian religion. Uh, they retain a specific structure with a further potential in the digital world. And thirdly, an insight into the application of the non-alphabetical uh, Latvian scripts uh, is discussed. So uh, it is known uh, around the world uh, that there have been several 
not scripts, not records. Uh, let's say the Inca Empire is uh, well known of, of the Quipu script, uh, which has been used uh, mostly for the calculations and uh, number value recordings. Then in uh, China, uh, there is this uh, Lao Tzu, uh, who uh, wrote uh, the work uh, Dao De Jin, where he uh, denotes the Jie Sheng, so the not records. And uh, if he uh, could, uh, he uh, writes in his uh, text that uh, uh, I would make the people return to the use of knotted chords instead of the written characters. However, the work by him is written already in the late uh, fourth uh, century uh, before current era. And uh, already uh, at that time, the knot records uh, were extinct in China. Then it is known also that uh, from uh, the 15th century until the 1903 in Japan, there was a Warazan, the head tax calculator used also by uh, making knots in a chord. Uh, but uh, still, uh, there are but a few instances, the use of which could still be found after the World War I or II. In case of Latvia, there are hundreds of documented Latvian folk songs called Dainas uh, until uh, 1880. And uh, here you can see the map of Latvia, heat map, which shows the locations where the song clues, so yarn ball, clue is a yarn ball, song clues contain not records. What is their distribution? And in the map, you can see that actually these uh, songs about such contents are widely spread. Then, um, since uh, 1920s up to uh, 2016, uh, there have been several occurrences of uh, evidence of their usage. Uh, so this uh, shows 10 places in Latvia and one place in Lithuania where the not records, Latvian not records are uh, being uh, used uh, and uh, they have a material uh, evidence as well. So this uh, point here uh, in, uh, in uh, nowadays Lithuania shows uh, the village Vismantai, where Latvians uh, went around the 13th century when crusades uh, came to Latvia. Uh, then uh, one part of them um, went uh, away to Lithuania side uh, where still the pagan uh, culture was retained after uh, Latvia got Christianized. So in that uh, village Vismante, uh, they somehow um, were absent of alphabetical influence a long time. The first school uh, which taught the alphabetical characters opened uh, near Wismante uh, only in 1920 and it lasted only for two years. So uh, also it is interesting that uh, if you compare the uh, literacy of alphabetical characters in uh, Latvia in, uh, in 1897 it was uh, on average 85.72%. Uh, 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 however, here on the Lithuanian side, uh, it was only 52% uh, in that year. Uh, for example, in 1923, uh, in Lithuania as a whole, there were, there were still 32.64% illiterate of alphabetical writing. So it shows that the uh, Lithuanian side was rather uh, uh, less uh, contaminated uh, uh, by alphabetical writing. And it uh, also contributed to uh, make possible these uh, not records to be uh, saved longer. 
here are three dinas, the Latvian folk songs, on the topic. Whichever song I sang, I wound it in a clue. As I got married, I unwound one by one. Book, oh book, go to the pit of hell. I was birched because of you, be it morning, be it night. Dear mother taught me well how to loop the yarn. Kind words, beautiful songs to be wound in one clue. Uh, up to now, there are three phonographic scripts of Latvian not records, uh, which have been deciphered. So you can see in this line there are alphabetical graphemes of nowadays Latvian language. Here is uh, international phonographic uh, alphabet, phon phonologic alphabet, and here you can see three uh, lines which shows the Baker script, Brintis script, and Krauk script. The Baker script has uh, only uh, eleven graphemes, and uh, so these cells show what scope of sounds are shown by this one not record sign. For example, here it is one light knot. Here it is one light and one dark knot. Here it is one dark knot. And so on. Uh, Brintish script has uh, 20 um, these uh, graphemes. And uh, here, Krauk's script has uh, 32 graphemes. Uh, here you can see an example of a word, Latvia, which is uh, tied in the not script of Brintis. Uh, so this is L, this is A, this is T, this is V, this is I, J, A, Latvia. Uh, however, this not script also has a cuneiform variant, uh, which can be done on a surface uh, by these lines. And here's a song. Mēs puisīši vismantieši, mēs mācējām mezglusiet. Tu meitiņa burteniece gan mācēsi izlasīt. Uh, then, it is interesting uh, uh, recent discovery that not only phonographical but also ideographic Latvian not records have been used. However, most of them are still uh, to be deciphered. Uh, here you can see uh, a chord of not records at the Bauska Museum of uh, Southern Latvia. These are images uh, of the private archive of Andris Michulis. And he has also studied these not records and he has uh, fixed the length of uh, each distance between the knots and also the meaning of these uh, texts which have been uh, conveyed by uh, those who inherited them. And for example, here uh, it is. Um, uh, the meaning here in English is rendered like this. Love wholeheartedly, be faithful and honest. Remember that you are of a great clan. Know that formerly there were many Latvians. Know that being a Latvian is a great honor. Uphold the honor of fathers and forefathers. Then you will be fortunate. Uh, here you can see the types of Latvian knot records used, how the knots are tied. There are several types of them discerned. Um, and there is a question. Could be Devanagari a two-dimensional rendering of former three-dimensional knot records, as they visually are quite similar. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, Latvian signs, Latviraksti are often used on textiles and they have the specific design which matches two-dimensional orthogonal triangular grid. Uh, this is called the fabric of the world. It has uh, vertical, horizontal and diagonal lines and each of these signs have a specific meaning denoting either deities, or some specific charm or luck meaning. Here is a fractal structure of Puzuri, 
which is a uh, straw mobile uh, at uh, Adiyavturi, a Lutheran uh, religion shrine. And here you can see the Om sound, which is uh, known uh, in India and other regions, which is encoded in the QR code like Latvian signs. So this is the raw code uh, made into zeros and ones. And then there is this sieve or grid put over them uh, and then displaced by one pixel. And then you can see how the textual information can be encoded. And as for conclusion, there are several applications of the non-alphabetical Latvian scripts. Firstly, uh, they are possible learning and practicing the tying and reading of the Latvian note records as a kind of transversal skills in school, as a topic of math, design and technology, housekeeping, history, literature and language lessons. The Latvian note records, as well as the cuneiform variant that seems like a mere ornament or decorative pattern, suit for conveying a message, invitation, confession, or even a secret report in a way that is incomprehensible to the vast majority. New possibilities of encoding and further decoding of any kind of information into a visually appealing rendition, and they all remind of the importance of keeping traditions of the cultural heritage alive and up to date, and encourage to appreciate the diverse treasures of the Indo-European culture. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. May I answer to some questions? Thank you very much, um, uh, Professor, for your very insightful um, paper on uh, Latvia. You know, many of us would be uh, not very aware of uh, the kind of crafts and the kind of designs that are prevalent in many parts of the world. And um, it's really, really, really interesting when uh, you talk about this particular topic. And now we have um, uh, the session is open to question. If anyone have, anybody has any question, I see some comments coming on uh, swastika and um, other things. Some some scholars have commented. So someone would like to ask question from Professor. Here is one belt which also shows these signs. And of course, if you look closely, there is also swastika as scholars. Wow. <laughs> showed. So pretty. This is from one okay. side and this is from other side. Okay. You know, Professor, I mean, the way I was telling about the other thing is that uh, um, every civilization, every country, every culture takes pride in, in its uh, own weaving and uh, traditions and also the clothes. Clothes become very important. They become um, two of the examples that I was telling. One is the Gandhi and another is Kamal uh, um, Paksha, Kamal Atatak rather. Um, and they took they took the dress as a national movement. I mean, when you take the dress, like Gandhi used dress. Gandhi in India was the harbinger of the freedom movement. And he took dress as a statement of political intention. He fought. He was not allowed to wear khadi, not allowed to wear, uh, uh, you know, dhoti and half-naked fakir. Churchill called him and they invited him to meet the queen and he said that if this is not acceptable, I opt out. That kind of pride which you need to have in your textile, in your weaving tradition. In India, we had, let me give you one example. We had one uh, Kabir. We are all familiar with him and all his uh, writings and poems and all are from his own background because he was a weaver. That kind of a thing. Uh, not many of us were familiar with the history and the weaving tradition and uh, the way you have explained about other things about Latvia. So we all we stand enlightened and probably too numb to ask too many questions because we don't know uh, probably much of the Latvian thing. Uh, thank you, thank you for uh, your scholarly presentation. And if anyone can, if anyone wants, they can ask question later as well.